Honorable Chairpersons of this session, expert panels, panel of discussion, learning audience and distinguished guests from home and abroad, Assalamu alaikum and good morning to you all. I'm Dr. Somaya Nastrin, working as a professor in the Department of Pediatric Cardiology, NICVT, Dhaka. Welcome you all to this day two scientific session on annual scientific conference on cardiovascular intervention 2022. This session is on intervention on structural heart disease. Uh, to chair this session, we have Emeritus Professor Sufia Rahman Madam, Professor Mohammad Jaidosan Sir, Professor S.K. Rajak Sir, Professor Abdul Salam Sir, Professor Mohammad Tarikul Islam, and Dr. Mohammad Jahidul Hassan. Today, we have an expert panel of discussants who are very keen to do structural intervention in pediatric and as well as adult patients of structural heart diseases. I would like to request our panel of experts to take their seats. Today we have five learned speakers who are efficient uh, to do the cardiac interventions. Each speaker will get 10 minutes to present their cases. My humble request to each of the uh, presenter to be very punctual on their allotted time. We'll uh, take question after all the speakers complete their topics. And I'll also uh, like to request the audience to silence their phones so that we can enjoy the session. Our first, our first speaker, Dr. Pradeep Kumar Karmakar, associate professor, National Institute of Cardiovascular Disease. He will talk on TAVR versus SAVR current and emerging concept. Honorable Chairperson, respected panelists, and my dear audience, very good morning. I am very blessed that today my mentor, Professor Sufia Roman, is on the dais. Today my talk about the transcatheter aortic valve replacement versus surgical aortic valve replacement current and emergent concept. We everybody know surgical aortic valve replacement is the oldest and is still the acceptable therapy for severe aortic stenosis in some cases. But transcatheter aortic valve replacement is the non-surgical interventional modern low risk procedure for severe aortic stenosis in most of the cases. This is the prevalence of the aortic stenosis in the US. About the 7% population, more than 65 years of age, having the aortic stenosis. This is one of the Indian study. It shows 0.2% the patient between the 50 to 60 years having the aortic stenosis. Even the 9.8 percent population, more than 80 years of age, having the aortic stenosis. And very interesting finding is, in our subcontinent, the 25 to 40 percent Asian population have the bicuspid aortic valve, unlike the Western. We know the causes. Most common cause is the degenerative. The intermediate is rheumatic, and less common is congenital, especially bicuspid aortic valve. These are three major causes. This is the uh, normal, this is the bicuspid aortic valve, this is the degenerative, and this is the rheumatic. We know the symptoms, the heart failure, angina, and syncope of symptomatic severe aortic stenosis. And this is very important slide that when the symptom of severe aortic stenosis happen, the life expectancy is dramatically reduced. Even the patient who develop the angina, he have only five years survival. The patient develops syncope, only the three years survival. And, and the patient develop left ventricular failure, only two years survival. This is one of the other interesting slides which shows that the five-year survival in breast cancer, lung cancer, colorectal cancer, prostate cancer, and ovarian cancer. Even the lung cancer has the 4% survival rate, but the severe inoperable aortic stenosis is only 3% survival rate in five years. This is our echocardiographic criteria. This is the recommendations. 
there are uh, three types of procedure for aortic valve replacement it is transcatheter aortic valve replacement surgical aortic valve replacement and minimum incision valve surgery very interesting is about the 40 percent of the severe aortic stenosis is not treated by the surgical aortic valve replacement because the it, it, it is it is more the most of the patient with a high risk they don't go for the surgical aortic valve replacement this is the history of the tower in 2002 16 april professor alan kibria first implanted the valve in france and this is the world scenario is the spectacular worldwide expansion is a four fold growth within 10 years hopefully in 2022 there will be 20 lakh implantation throughout the world this is the what is the evidence let's see the partner 1b and core valve er shows tavi is superior to the medical treatment then the partner 1A and core valve HR shows TAVI is non-inferior or su superior to surgical aortic valve replacement. The partner 2A and SAR TAVI shows that TAVI is non-inferior even superior to the surgical aortic valve replacement in transfemoral access. In 2019, the largest study shows TAVI is superior to the surgical aortic valve replacement. These are the devices, especially the more devices coming, two types of devices there in the market. It is the, all of the balloon expandable, these are the self expandable, this is the other design. What the, the technology is improving in 2002 and 4, only the Cribria Edward valve, it is compensionate. Then 2005 to 2010, it is only indicated as the inoperable and high risk cases. 2010 to 2018, it is done in the inoperable, high risk, and intermediate cases of the patient. 2019 is declared it never can be used in inoperable, high risk, intermediate, even in low risk cases. This is one of the promising valve, new valve, is made in India, is my valve, is from the Merrill Science. It is the highest number of valve implanted in this region. This is the new valve from the Boston Scientific, from the Abbott and the other companies, and the new delivery system is coming up. This is the study of the Tavar and Sever in low expression. It shows there is, there is no statistically significant difference between the SN Tevar and Sever, even Tevar shows superiority than the Sever. This is the important landmark date, the August, August 16, 2019, the FDA approved Tevar in low, low risk patient. On that day, from that day, we can use the Tevar as like a Sever in most of the cases which is not in rheumatic or less than 60 years of age. Even the bicuspid speed valve in our subcontinent, around 40, 25 to 40 percent patients are having bicuspid speed valve. And though the bicuspid speed valve is 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 uh, offline of uh, level indication, but it is randomly using in our subcontinent throughout the world. What is the uh, how it is uh, improving? Because now the tower is local anesthesia and light sedation. It is transfemoral most of the cases, peak closure device, T on demand and ICU less than 24 hours. We do not use general anesthesia, endotagular intubation, transesophageal echo and additional vascular. We don't need it to make it simplified. This is 2019. There's a lot of people inside the cat lab, but now it is the Millimanistic transfemoral cath lab is a few people inside the cath lab. What the situation in Bangladesh? Total six cases done in Bangladesh. Four cases done by me and my team 
in NSCBD, one case is Dr. Mamanu Jawan and his team in United Hospital, and one case done Shabadin Talukdar and his team in Evercare Hospital. In our experience in NCBD, our one case is Trikaspid, two cases Bicaspid, and one is Valve in Valve. This is our experience. The age ever is 70 years, and is the highest is 80 years, and lowest is 60 years. Two male, two female. Then average mean aortic gradient was 52 millimeter of mercury. Average peak gradient 100. 0.4 millimeter mercury. Procedural time is uh, 132 minutes, just um, uh, more than two hours. Per procedural aortic gradient, it was 15 average. Post procedural aortic gradient on day of discharge, we are going to discharge the patient on the third day, it was 12 from 100 to, to it, it, it become down to 12. Hospital state was seven days. Post procedural, uh, as only five, three to five days. The, our complication, there is no vascular complication, and we did the proglide closure. Paravalvular leak is mild, is one in non significant, PPM nil, TIA one, disabling CBD nil, no death, symptomatic improvement, shortness of breath improved in all the cases. Post procedural aortic gradient in one month, 10, and post procedural aortic gradient, and third one is to stand. We do the CT scan. There, this is the, uh, uh, it is, it is cold left data to, to see the aortic valve. This is the, our first case. This is our, this is the first case, 60 years by Caspian aortic valve, is the final shot. This is the 80 years tricuspid valve, is the final shot. This is 65 years bicuspid aortic valve, is the final shot. And this is the, our last cases we did in the, in the last month, is 70, 74 years in valve in valve. So expansion of future taper, a paradigm shift of the treatment of the AS. In 2022, taper was conceived for the patient who are not optimal candidate for sever, but in 2022, Sever is indicated in patients who are not optimal candidate to the Tever. It is the NICBD Tever team. Thank you very much for patient hearing. Thank you, Professor Pradeep Kumar Kormakar. Excellent uh, activities, particularly regarding the Tever you are doing. You are really the icon in this field. Uh, I do appreciate your activities and I do con congratulate. A uh, couple of questions to you. The, although there is time limitation, but uh, uh, for the lear, uh, beginner or learner, uh, we know to we have we ask you to uh, how do you assess the suitability for selection of a case number one, and uh, what are the pre-procedure activities you usually perform, particularly to uh, avoid the uh, to protect the coronary flow? How do you size the bulb? Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your query. Especially in, in, in the coronary car, most of the, most of the person we are doing, it is more than 60 years old of age. Initially, during the CT scan of the valve, we do the CT coronary angiogram also to detect what the coronary status. If you see there is a suspicion of block or stenosis, we go for the angiogram before the tower. And we are plan if the lesion is significant, we do the PCI on the same setting and go for the tower in the same setting. And for the uh, annular assessment, we have a dedicated software for this uh, uh, annular assessment, annular diameter, uh, uh, sinoatrial diameter, coronary height, all the uh, measurement is done by the software system. And we can also assess. Pre-procedural activity, it is like a stenting. It is like, a, because it is a stand, the stand is implanted in the coronary. This is stand in, in, in implanted in the aortic valve. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, our next speaker, Dr. Abdul Momen, associate professor in National Institute of Cardiovascular Disease. He will share his variable experiences on contemporary PTMC complications and bailout. Uh, as for the time constraint, we'll take all the questions after the end of the session.
respected chairperson, learned audience. It's my great pleasure and honor to present something on PTMC in front of the pioneer of PTMC of Bangladesh, Professor Sufia Rahman. Salute, madam. Assalamu alaikum. I am here with the contemporary uh, complication and bailout of uh, PTMC. I will uh, start with few cases. Uh, before starting, the complications of PTMC are patient-related due to their clinical and anatomical conditions and operator-related. This is the case one. A 32 years uh, female has uh, severe mitral stenosis. And we are doing the PTMC uh, puncture. And after puncture, the, what we see, the puncture needle pierces the aorta and we are just in front of the coronary arteries. We are very lucky that we per not perforate the coronary arteries and the nightmares in cath lab. But fortunately, this patient is very well tolerated. There is no pericardial effusion. We wait for 15 minutes. then. The puncture is done and the PTMC is completed. Probably the aorta is so elastic that the uh, puncture with a mullein sheath, there is no uh, uh, clinically significant event. My case two, this is a case of severe mitral stenosis. Valve area is 0.5 and there is no significant MR. And we are doing the uh, PTMC, the puncture is done already. And the uh, LA graphy is done. But we face very difficulties to enter into the LV. We, uh, uh, we tried uh, our every uh, methods but failed. But lastly, when we succeeded to enter the LV, if you look at the left panel, the force of entry into the uh, LV from LA, we could not control. And it heated the lateral wall of LV. And on the, uh, we pull it, but there is some entrapment the distal balloon will be, uh, will be inflated fast, but when we inflate it, the uh, proximal one was inflated. So there is an entrapment probably within the papillary muscle. Then we again, again pull it back and the PTMC completed. But after completed the PTMC, the heart, uh, cardiac silhouette is enlarging, the border movement of the uh, heart Heart movement is uh, not well visualized, and the patient went into a cardiac arrest. We are doing the CPR and the puncture pericardial uh, fluid aspiration, a hemopericardium is developed. Pigtail was introduced into the uh, pericardium, and th 300 ml of uh, blood is auto transfused, and the patient is improving. And if you look at that, um, patient is gradually improving. And this is the handheld echo done in cath lab. The pericardial efficient uh, is uh, also decreasing and the heart contraction is good. And this is uh, after 300 ml of pericardial fluid aspiration, the f patient is uh, doing well. We wait for 30 minutes in the cath lab. There is no new accumulation of pericardial fluid and then we shift the patient to the uh, CCU, and this is the uh, uh, pre-discharge echocardiography. The valve area in increased to 1.3. And there is an interesting finding in echo. We have no experience with this uh, type of... Uh, uh, when we do the global longitudinal strain, the strain is all over the red or uh, near red, but in the inferior lateral wall, it is blue. So that might be the site of injury of the peri uh, LV. The complications of PTMC in hospital mortality, hemopericardium, embolic events, and a severe mitral regurgitation. 
and this is the frequency of different study. The fatality rate of PTMC varies from 0 to 3 percent. The main cause of death are massive pericardium, uh, hemopericardium or poor condition of the patient. The hemopericardium when occurs related to transeptal puncture and in our cases we suspect that the left ventricular perforation by guide wire or the balloons occur in less experienced operator, unfavorable patient char characteristics such as severe atrial, left atrial enlargement and severe thoracic deformity. It is the incidence varies from 0.5 to 12 percent. The hemopericardium usually has immediate clinical consequence resulting in tamponade. When to suspect if hypotension develop, the echocardiography confirms an increased cardiac shadow is the uh, <coughs> telltale sign. How to treat immediate pericardiosynthesis are to, uh, under eco guidance, reversal of anticoagulation. Most of the time, pericardiosynthesis is sufficient, PTMC can be reattempted, and surgery if fails. Preventive measures adopt a good technique of septal puncture, either Inouye or Hung method. Be gentle during the puncture needle, wire, and balloon manipulation. This is the Inouye and Hung methods. Uh, we usually prefer the Hung method, and this is the Hung method. The lower end of the pigtail is the superior end of the tricuspid valve, and the lateral border of the LA, we make a straight line. Midpoint of that straight line, we make a vertical line, and the puncture site is the uh, transaction point of these two lines, one and half vertebra below. So this is the, D is the vertebral height, so transaction point below <coughs> one D is the, uh, within this, <coughs> this, <coughs> this limit will, <coughs> sorry, will puncture. So the, the position of the puncture needle is, the, is very important, three to six o'clock position in levocardic patient and uh, seven to nine o'clock position is the, uh, is the um, dextrocardia patient. I have the experience of a patient with uh, dextrocardia with PTMC, probably the first reported case in Bangladesh. So this is the position of the needle, 40, if the LA size is uh, 40, is 4 to 5 o'clock, 40 to 50, 5 to 6 o'clock is if it is larger, 6 o'clock. And this is the lateral view uh, before puncture, the septogram. We, uh, we confirm with lateral view, and this is the puncture, safe puncture. And the embolic event, the sources is LA appendage thrombus, but thrombus that develop during procedure, if we not anticoagulate properly, air leaking, calcium embolism, and embolism encountered in 0.5 to uh, 5 percent. The management, coronary embolism, thrombus aspiration, and PCI, air embolism, atropine if bradycardia, fluid expansion if hypotension. And the cerebral embolism, stroke specialist, by thrombolysis or aspiration. Prevention of thromboembolism, it is very important. Detection of left atrial thrombus before PTMC, take the help of transesophageal echocardiography, heparinization during the PTMC, and careful de-airing of the balloon. And this is the three views of uh, uh, transesophageal echo, how to we confirm that the LA appendix contains no thrombus. This is the 30 to 60 degree view, this is 90 degree view, and this is very conventional but very new uh, uh, views of 135 where the LA appendix uh, shows the highest volume and we can see the pectinate muscle also. So this is how we can, uh, uh, we can adopt the 135 view for LA appendix in transesophageal. This is the last one is the uh, LA appendix transesophageal. This is the last one, uh, this one. So PTMC severe mitral regurgitation occurs in non-commissural leaflet tearing, excessive commissural splitting, rupture of a papillary muscle. The frequency of severe mitral regurgitation ranges from 2 to 19 percent. This is the commissural tear, anterior commissural was teared in the upper panel right. Evaluate the severity, hemodynamic tolerance, echocardiography, Doppler, systolic pulmonary pressure, and severe uh, size of the V wave. Understanding the mechanism, echocardiography, and treat. If there is a hypotension, IABP and emergency surgery, no hypertension, only the increase of pulmonary hypertension, schedule for early surgery within days. If there is no pulmonary hypertension, schedule for secondary surgery if not contraindicated. Prevention, adapt 
balloon size according to the patient's characteristics, step by step balloon size uh, uh, by echocardiography, stop procedure if a new MR plus one appear or signs of paravalvular tear. This is the measuring of balloon and this is all know how to measure the uh, size of the balloon for a patient and this is how the step by step, first step there is a partial inflation of balloon and then we check uh, uh, the echocardiography <coughs> then the full inflation of balloon a bigger size. So this is the step by step in uh, uh, balloon inflation. So PTMC hypotension during the procedure we for look for the ECG if there is bradycardia or ST elevation we should suspect the AR embolism. Look at the LA pressure, high, very large V wave, there is a severe mitral regression, we, uh, we should give the specific treatment and look at the echocardiography tamponade and drainage. So criteria for stoppage of pre-TMC is the valve area more than one centimeter per meter square plus, plus complete commissural opening of at least one commissure, appearance of increase of more than one grade MR. And this is the criteria for successful pre-TMC, echocardiographic valve area more than one centimeter per meter square, Echocardiographic showing splitting of one or more commissure, decrease of LA pressure by 50%, decrease in the length of the disappearance of diastolic murmur of uh, uh, mitral stenosis, decrease in the gradient across the Doppler and pressure suit up sign. So these are the long term results, uh, 9 to 12 years follow up, 30 to 9, up to 90% even free survival. So thank you, thank you for your patience here. Thank you Dr. Abdul Momin sir for your excellent demonstration. Uh, our third speaker is Dr. Taufik Shahriar Hawk, Associate Professor, National Heart Foundation. He will talk on the most attractive and exciting part of the management of congenital heart disease, the device therapies in congenital heart disease. Honorable Chairperson, Moderators and Discussant, and the August Gathering, Assalamu Alaikum. First of all, my uh, gratitude to the organizers for giving me a chance to have a lecture in this uh, B BSCI Scientific Conference. So I'm Dr. Taufik Shariar Hawk from National Heart Foundation. I would like to uh, talk on this topic on device therapy in congenital heart disease. So first of all, I would like to start with the fact that we are a country of 160 million people with more than 1,200 people living per square kilometer. We are the most densely populated country in the world. Uh, but on the other hand, health expenditure as share of GDP is only 2.4% in our country. Our crude, crude uh, birth rate is 17 per 1,000 people. And as we have said, our GDP expenditure on health services is very low. S more than 74% of our health-related expenditures are out-of-pocket expenditure. Uh, if we consider our infant and neonatal mortality, our neonatal mortality is around 20 per 1,000 live births, and infant mortality is 25 per thousand live births. And if you look at the causes of these mortalities, you can see in the neonatal group, 12% death is due to congenital heart disease and 1% of them are thought to be of cardiac origin. And then what is the prevalence or incidence prevalence of congenital heart disease in our country? In a study conducted in 2008 by uh, Professor Nurnar Fatima, she showed in a single center it was 25 per thousand live births and associated other somatic anomaly, anomalies like Down syndrome was 18% and commonest diseases were ASD, VSD, PDA and Tetralogy of Fellow. A very recent, recent study uh, done by Dr. Shantosh Kumar in a single upazila, he showed that incidence of pre prevalence of uh, congenital heart disease were 10% in uh, general population. So the burden of disease is not very small. But are we prepared? There are now almost more than 100 cath labs in all over Bangladesh, and only six centers are providing uh, complete care for the patients with congenital heart disease with dedicated pediatric cardiology and pediatric surgery teams. At this point, I would like to highlight a few points from our institution, our surgery unit. We have a very strong cardiac, pediatric cardiac surgery unit, and uh, Last year, they performed more than 750 surgeries and 38% of them were infants. And all sorts of surgeries are done with uh, 
good outcome, only 6.4% mortality. And we can see that complex cases were more than 48% in their, in their study. And there were 29 cases of uh, arterial switch operation they performed last year. So I won't hesitate to say that in our center, we started pediatric cardiology program to support our pediatric surgery team. Besides doing cardiac cath and valvoplasties and uh, atrial septostomies and PDS stentings, we also started doing uh, device closure for congenital heart disease from 2015. In, actually, in 2014, we did a series of uh, workshops with, uh, in collaboration with Madras Medical Mission. And from 2015, we are doing a device closure for congenital heart disease, which actually takes out a large group of patients from our OT schedule and allows them to concentrate more on complex cases. Till today, we have done more than 1,700 cases of device closure for congenital heart disease. Uh, if we go by the diagnosis, 60% cases are atrial septal defect, 35% are PDA, and the rest are uh, ventricular septal defects. When we select patients for um, ASD closure, actually we take patients who are more than two years of age or at least 15 kg in weight. A transthoracic echo is the key to a good, inter good congenital uh, intervention. And uh, in the pre COVID era, up to 2019, almost 90% of our ASD patients, adult ASD patients, underwent transesophageal echo. But during COVID, uh, we actually shifted from our uh, protocol, and now we have become quite courageous, and we are doing all of the ASDs with only 10% of them undergoing transesophageal echocardiography. Uh, we actually select patients with five millimeter reams all around. Definitely, aortic rim is deficient in our population. We used to take, the, uh, it's, it is said that 34 millimeter de uh, defects are very uh, safe for, uh, for closure, but actually with availability of larger devices, larger uh, ASDs can now be closed. We de prefer a single defect. And uh, you can see our patients, most of our patients are above the age of 20 years, which actually indicates to our failure, failure of our system to uh, get these patients at an, congenital heart disease at a younger age. Uh, so just to share a few cases, right upper pulmonary vein uh, approach is our favored, uh, preferred and favorite approach. We have done cases through all of this, a case uh, uh, done through uh, uh, mitral valve approach. Sorry, it took too, too much of a long time. Uh, okay, so this is a 70-year-old male with 36, uh, 34 millimeter ASD, we closed with a 38 millimeter device. But when we have uh, larger ASDs with small reams, we can always take help of a balloon. This is a case done by a balloon assisted, uh, balloon supported deployment. takes a long time and uh, quite cumbersome. So device is deployed and balloon is deflated. And regarding VSDs, transcatheter closure of uh, perimembranous and muscular VSDs is possible. It is a good alternative in residual VSDs after surgery, VSDs that are poorly accessible for surgical closure. Muscular VSDs are located centrally in the interventricular septum. In perimembranous VSD, there are chances of uh, AV block entrapment of tri um, tricuspid uh, valve tissue causing the large shear. These things have to be uh, kept in mind. The, so we have done 94 cases of ventricular, uh, ventricular septal defect. This is a post-surgical uh, ventricular defect closure. We did it with uh, ADO2, a small defect, which was device was de deployed uh, through aortic anterior approach and uh, checked and released. We have closed uh, ASDs with uh, duct occluded 2, which is a simple procedure. You just go through the aorta, cross, the, cross into the um, left ventricle, cross through the ASD, uh, VSD into the right ventricle and deploy a device. So it takes less time and we always prefer this device. But using the duct occluder 1, you have to have an AV loop. Most of the cases you have to have an AV loop, so you go anterior take out the wire through a retrograde approach and deploy a device from the uh, ventricle, from the venous side. So you need to snare down your uh, wire from the uh, right heart of the, right heart of the right heart. 
So this was actually a, a dextrocardia patient. We closed it with an ADU2. It was a seven millimeter device. The device was deployed. It was checked and released. So regarding PDAs, almost with available different types of disease, uh, devices, uh, ADU1, ADU2, vascular plugs, um, muscular VSD device, most of the PDAs which are not irreversibly hypertensive can now be closed. So this is our data with 655 cases. We usually do our uh, PDAs through single venous puncture, uh, an anti-grade approach. But in some patients, adult patients or obese patients, it is, this becomes difficult and we have done some cases, uh, retrograde approach as well. Here again, you have to form an AV loop, snare down your wire and deploy a device from the ventricular side. So uh, this is a case of 19 year old girl, uh, 17 millimeter PDA, pulmonary pressure initially was 90 by 50 and systemic pressure was 160 by 40. And uh, we actually did a balloon occlusion. We occluded the PDA with a 21 millimeter balloon and the PA pulmonary pressure came down, down to 50 by 20 and systemic pressure was 150 by uh, 70. And then we took a large uh, post-MI uh, muscular VSD device, 21 millimeter, and closed, closed the defect. So no, no, none of the procedures uh, we do are without complications. So we had a one month follow-up of 96% of the patients and um, uh, six months follow-up of 82% patients. We failed to deploy a device in 11 cases. We embolized four devices, one procedural death during LED intervention in a patient with ASD. Uh, uh, we did multiple procedures in uh, eight cases. Uh, so the burden of congenital heart disease is not very less in our country. Every year, almost 30,000 patients are included in this pool. Are we really prepared? So the number of centers are really less. There is lack of trained manpower. Mostly we suffer due to wrong diagnosis at grassroots level. There is wrong counseling and patients are uh, referred very late. If, we, if I show you a data, 502 cardiac cats done last year, 50% of them were done to see um, reversibility of pulmonary pressure, and unfortunately, more than 50% were irre irreversibly hypertensive, and they had to um, be taken out of the treatment protocol, only conservative management. Another thing is the financial burden. In our data, it shows more than 75% of the patient require um, financial support uh, to have any procedure done, which is also a big problem for us. So what is the way forward? We need a proper data to, place our pro to see our problem. We need early diagnosis. We need early referral. We need trained manpower. And obviously, above all, we need health insurance to uh, ensure a good life for these patients with congenital heart disease. Thank you very much uh, from our National Heart Foundation Congenital Intervention Team. Thank you for a kind patience hearing. Thank you, Dr. Taufik Sharir Hawk, for your nice presentation. Uh, we have slight change in our schedule as uh, our next speaker, uh, Dr. Mohamedullah Firoz, is unavailable due to some unavoidable circumstances. So we'll skip his topic on role of echocardiography in cardiac intervention, and we'll switch to the next topic, mitral clip what we should do. And to uh, present this, I will uh, like to invite the speaker, Dr. S.M. Asan Habib, Associate Professor, BSM. Respected panelist and moder moderator and dear audience, Assalamu Alaikum. With the permission of the chairpersons, now welcome to my topics. My track clip, what we should know. Mitral degradation is one of the most common heart valve disorder. Chronic mitral degradation is significantly public health burden. More than 3 million people suffering from moderate to severe mitral degradation. Surgical repair or replacement is the established treatment for degenerative mitral degradation. And patients with associated comorbidities or left ventricular dysfunctions are very high surgical risk, need less invasive and safer option. Metal clip system developed in 1998 by Sengor. Feasibility was first demonstrated in animal model and first performed in human 
by Dr. Jose in 2003. Mitral valve consists of annulus, anterior and posterior mitral leaflet subdivided into A1, A2, A3 and P1, P2, P3 scale of segment. Quarter tendini, papillary muscles, and comb shoes. The aim of percutaneous strategies for mitral valve repair is to provide relief from severe AMR in patients who are not eligible candidate for surgical correction or who prefer a less invasive approach without the need for cardiopulmonary bypass. The percutaneous therapeutic options are end-to-end -end double orifice leaflet repair with the mitral clip system, coronary angioplasty, direct mitral angioplasty, hybrid ring angioplasty, percutaneous corda implant, vascular remodeling device, and percutaneous mitral valve replacement. The mitral clip system is a minimal, minimally invasive heart valve repair procedure Implanting the clip in the heart without opening the chest, the best studied percutaneous mitral valve repair based on Alfred Stis operation between P2A2 segment mitral clip system is selected in patient significantly primary mitral degeneration and also significant secondary mitral degeneration with heart failure remains symptomatic despite guided directed medical management. Recently, ACC and AHA guidelines recommended class 2B level of evidence B consideration of transcatheter repair for severely symptomatic patients with chronic severe primary mitral degeneration reasonable life expectancy and surgical risks attributed to severe comorbidities. This procedure considered in moderate to severe AMR, pathology in P2 and A2 areas, corporation length more than 2 mm, corporation depth less than 11 mm, filial gap less than 10 millimeter, filial oid less than 15 millimeter, mitral valve orifice area more than 4 centimeter square, and mobile leaflet length more than 1 centimeter. Is contraindicated? Passion not tolerated. The procedural anticoagulation and procedural antifiltrated regime, rheumatic mitral valve disease, active endocarditic valve disease. And evidence of intracardiac, inferior and femoral vein thrombosis and functional mitral degeneration cases, ejection function less than 25 persons and left uh, end systolic dimension more than 55 millimeter. The, this procedure is done usually under general anesthesia with the guidance of fluoroscopy and Tense is with echocardiography. And usually in the right femoral axis and hyperization with ACT level more than 250 to 300 and perioperative antibiotic as per policy. Usually done in femoral vein root and mitral clip system consists of steerable guide catheter and clip delivery system, the possible steps. Usually done with a multidisciplinary team, my heart team. And before doing this, the baseline imaging should be taken regarding mitral valve morphology and anatomy and calculation of the gradient <coughs> and then <coughs> and size of the annulus. Then, with transeptal puncture, 
usually puncture in the posterior superior part of the intertail septum and at first confirm the location and safety consideration is most important. Steering and positioning of the mitral clip device is very important. The clip delivery into straddle position, clip axial orientation above mitral valve annulus, usually in the center of the annulus. The leaflet grasping, insertion and assessment and deployment is very crucial procedure process. A leaflet insertion, grasping and drop and clip arm closure, pre-deployment -de imaging assessment, tissue breathing and gradient and of the regurgitation is important. Clip release and post-release evaluation should be done properly. And then systemic removal of the whole system. The metal clip device consists of MRI compatible cobalt chromium impl implant having two arms and two grippers which are used to grasp the opposing edge of the mitral leaflets. These are the mitra clip systems. The stabilizer which hold the whole system, the clip delivery system, and this is the clip delivery system, and the delivery catheter handle. This is and the stable guide handle, and this is the stable guide containing stable sleeves and delivery catheter, and the tip mitra clip device. This is a mitra clip knob knobology, guide handle for position of the anteriorly, sleeve handle for medial, lateral, or anteriorly positioning, clip delivery handles for clip positioning. Grasping and uh, deployment of the metal clip and stabilizer for medial and lateral positioning. This is the guide knob. When you, clock, uh, when you rotate clockwise, it, it curves the guide, and when you clock anti clockwise, it straight the guide. This is the steering guide catheter. The metal clip device dimension usually. We push the clip after opening 180 degree arms position. This figure is a here the <coughs> catheter system and clip are in the RA under uh, through the uh, passes through the wire. This is the stable guide guide. And the clip delivery system attached with the stable guide system. This is the position of the clip in the left atrium. The man manipulate and steering the clip by towards the le left upper pulmonary vein. This is the positioning of the clip and its draw after opening and in the LA, it slowly draw the clip towards the metal leaflet is a two-dimensional transitional echo showing the <coughs> positioning of the clip. This is the ultimate result. The, these are the two opening form after clipping of the metal valve. This is positioning. If needed the second clip, it should be parallel to the first clip. The success depends on successful deployment of one or two clips attached to both leaflets. MRI should be less than grade two mitral degradation, mean tense mitral gradient less than five millimeter mercury. These are pre and post pre pre and post hemodynamics of the mitral leaflet, and in post clip the Left actual pressure diminished and BOFs abolished. This, this is the complications. The procedural adverse events are single leaflet 
device adjustment 1.3 percent, device embolization 0.2 percent, major bleeding 3.7 percent, stroke 0.6 percent, <coughs> and cardiac surgery is needed in 0.06 percent, HD closure needed in 1.6 percent. This is a trial of the metal clip. Everest trial based on uh, confirm the feasibility of the procedure and Everest 2 trial is based on safety and efficacy as compared to those with surgical repair. Major adverse event is significantly less in mitra clip delivery in comparison to surgery, greater need of blood transfusion in surgery, death, mitral valve surgery, mitral severity greater than grade 2 is higher in surgery in comparison to mitral clip therapy. And subsequent analysis of this study and additional registry demonstrate persistent reduction of mitral regurgitation grade, improvement of NOIC class, functional class, left ventricular dimension is reduced. These are the studies done in the world. More than 25,000 populations under these studies. Meta-analysis shows death, stroke, bleeding, prolonged ventilation, uh, ventilations, ICU days and hospital days are less, significantly less in mitral cliff procedure in comparison to surgery. Other device, device usually used are Nicord, Mitra Spacer, Mitra Flex. Now conclusion. Mitra clip therapy is FD approved for symptomatic patients with severe mitral exaggerations of primary MR or mixed MR who are poor surgical candidates Finally, despite reduction of mitral regurgitations with either percutaneous repair or surgically functional mitral regurgitations has increased risk of long-term mortality. Newer devices have potential but are a long way off. Mitral valve, uh, tense mit <coughs> mitral valve uh, replacement may be the future, but given the safety profile, of mitral cliff, there may be a role of both technologies. Thank you all for patient hearing. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Asim Asan Habib, for your nice presentation. Uh, now this is the time for discussion with question and answer. I'll request all our learned audience, our discussant and chairpersons to ask any questions about your topic of interest, and our learned speaker will answer. And I will also request our chairperson, extra panels, uh, and uh, discussions to make comments on them. In this learned gathering, we have uh, Professor Choudhury Meshkat Ali sir and Professor Fozun Rahman sir. I will request uh, them to take part in this discussion. Just I want to know your experience as a complication of acute MR in the setting of PTMC. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, this is a very important complication and uh, very devastating complication also. The mitral regurgitation is uh, if there is more than one grade, uh, up to one grade increase of mitral regurgitation, it is accepted. So if there is no mitral regurgitation during, before PTMC, grade uh, one or mild mitral regurgitation is accepted. And if it is mild MR, then moderate MR is accepted. But it is the... <coughs> two factors during the uh, mitral regurgitation assessment. One is patient's uh, criteria and the echocardiographic and uh, uh, per procedural uh, pressure gradient criteria. These are the criteria to assess the severity of mitral regurgitation. If the patient develops hypertension, that means it is severe and immediate action should be taken. And IABP support, if it is available, should be given. And immediate surgical uh, replacement of mitral valve is required. If the patient has uh, uh, no hypotension, but only the increase of pulmonary blood pressure, pulmonary systolic pressure, then it needs a uh, CCU support uh, and planning for early surgery. 
but if there is no, 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 no hypotension, no increase of pulmonary hypertension, but only the increase of mitral regurgitation and the V wave is larger, this patient can be followed up and a routine surgical replacement can be in indicated. And we uh, sometimes face this problem. One of my patients needed uh, emergency uh, surgery uh, within uh, within few hours and the patient was saved. So this is, we should be very vigilant to see the complications of PTMC. PTMC is a blind procedure and uh, there is, uh, the, if we are cautious, there will be less complication. But there is, if, if anybody asks that I have no complication, I think he do not do any PTMC. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Moomin. Uh, actually, the point is that related to the PTMC, two complications is catastrophic. One is acute MR, another is puncture to the root of the aorta. So the, both of them need surgical intervention. So those who are doing PTMC, especially our fellows, you should remember these two complications is very life-threatening. Thank you, John. Uh, Professor Momen, I do congratulate to you for your excellent presentation. Actually, it, is a, uh, it was a nice presentation regarding the complication of PTMC. Uh, my uh, comments to you, that is the, uh, the my uh, suggestion, that is the, now the transesophageal echocardiogram is available in every center, except few private center. So, um, uh, TA-guided transeptal puncture is uh, mostly recommended in advanced country uh, during any transeptal puncture because it can avoid the potential complication regarding the transeptal puncture. And another is my question to you. Uh, actually, we had a, a problem with the balloon rupture. During the withdrawal of the balloon, there was a rupture of balloon within the LA and there was a lot of air embolism that is uh, ca causing the patient to develop convulsion. So this is my experience, one of the experience, uh, particularly this is related with the Oxford balloon, uh, who is uh, mo in most of the center we are uh, using. So uh, um, my question to you, there is the how much amount of uh, air embolism can cause the cerebral uh, um, air embolism and what are the options of treatment? Sir, the very Do you have uh, an interesting, interesting uh, question, sir. So, uh, trans uh, esophageal echo guidance, it is routinely not used, but if the septum uh, LA is unusually large and there is an aneurysm in the intratrial septum, in that particular cases, we sometimes use the transeptal and worldwide it is not recommended for PTMC for trans, but for mitral clip what we see that the puncture was done by, because it is the posterior superior aspect of the uh, 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 septum where, which should be punctured in mitral clip. Otherwise, the device would not cross the uh, 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 mitral valve. And uh, regarding the air embolism, uh, we have no experience with air embolism, but during SD device, we have experience with air embolism in the coronaries. The patient develop a, a chest pain, and there is a transient ST elevation, and after a few uh, minutes, the patient settled down. So uh, it, it, on the right side of the heart, it is up, said that up to 150 ml uh, 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 of uh, AR can be absorbed without any complication. But for the left side of the heart, even one, milli, one ml of AR, AR can be devastating if it is entered into the coronary circulation. So this is this is very important. We should be very cautious. And during the procedure of device, we should be very cautious, de-airing of the devices, putting the uh, distal end of the device shaft under the water when we advance the devices. So this is very important. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your comments. I have a question to Dr. Taufik Shariarak. Regarding uh, device closure therapy, the, res the recent guideline, as we have um, seen that, they mentioned that when there is a pulmonary hypertension, when there is a pulmonary hypertension in, uh, I'm talking about adult congenital heart disease. So they recommend that if there is pulmonary hypertension before device closure, you should do cardiac catheterization. They mentioned that. But in our present setting, uh, all patients, we, we do not do catheterization, especially in uh, PSP 40, 30, 50, 60. But uh, if we want to follow the guideline, that was recommended to do cardiac catheterization. So what should we, uh, uh, my question is to the point that 
at which limit uh, of pulmonary artery systolic pressure we can do uh, device closure without cardiac catheterization. But what is your experience? What is your uh, comment? Thank you very much. Um, actually, uh, one point is uh, in our country, we are still very conservative in doing a device with patients with borderline reversibility because we don't want to create a bad impression among the population that we are doing the things not in the right way. But regarding cardiac catheterization, every patient we do device. We definitely check the systemic pressure and we check the pulmonary pressure. If it's, a, if it's acceptably, in both are acceptable level, that means if there is uh, reversibility is normal, only then we deploy a device. Say we find a pulmonary artery pressure of 60 by 20 and systemic pressure is 100 by 50, we'll not do it. So it's not the pulmonary pressure, rather it's the uh, reversibility we are, uh, we always try to find. It's not true that we don't do cardiac catheter. We don't do full cardiac catheterization and do all the oximeter and everything, but we definitely check the uh, systemic and pulmonary pressure. And we, in many of, most of the cases, we, check, we also check the uh, uh, pulmonary uh, oxygen level. And also uh, in borderline cases, uh, it's really a borderline result. 50% of them will improve, 50% will deteriorate. So patients are counseled accordingly. In younger patients, someone has tried. In, in uh, India, there is trial with a fenestrated device. And uh, in many cases of this borderline reversibility, we refer them to the surgeons for partial closure. We don't do, we don't do device to them. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Tofik Sharia. Uh, I have so some far, uh, supplementation. During device closure, I have experience with a only ASD device closure, and uh, what Nuralam is said that the guidelines said if the uh, PVR is less than three, then we'll proceed uh, three to five borderline. Then the guideline is doing such way, but we usually see the pulmonary arterial pressure always before the, uh, if it is more than two third of the systolic blood pressure then we are very cautious. We may defer the case. We do the full cardiac catheterization, do the calculation and reversibility, then we follow, go forward. Uh, my, my cutoff point is 50 or 55 cyst uh, cyst pulmonary arterial systolic pressure on catheterization. Beyond that, we are very conservative to do a device because what uh, as Dr. Tofik Sharia says that there may be a borderline uh, cases in 50% uh, improve, 50% not may improve. So this is my cut-off point that systolic art, uh, pressure is, if it is more than 55 or it is more than two-thirds of the systolic blood pressure, we do not uh, usually do the device. Uh, we are uh, talking about the uh, device closure, especially we are, now we are talking about ASD device closure possibly. And two-thirds systemic, more than two-thirds systemic pressure is an indication for not to do any device. And our clinical data also tells that the systemic desaturation, the SPO2 values also came down for this patient. And they're not the good candidate for ASD device closure. And for other uh, device, especially for uh, VSD, uh, device for VSD is usually done in case of perimembranous VSD and muscular VSD, and which are very small with a good gradient. And Usually, we do not calculate where the uh, where this gradient is high. We think that the is normal in this situation. And the PDA device closure at the second year of life, uh, we might get uh, Eisenmenger change also in the uh, P large PDA. So we will have to be cautious about the intervention of large PDA even in second year of life. And for good case to be, device to be done in PDA is the first year of life. Thank you very much. Sir, I have a question, supplementary question. If a patient with RV dysfunction uh, is associated, then PSP pressure may be uh, sub, uh, not representative. In that sense, uh, is it two-third is, uh, is a cut-off value for decision-making if there is RV dysfunction associated? Sorry, I may have to interfere, Kori. Sorry, I'm going to ask you a request. Thank you very much. Why don't you listen to what you said? Why don't you listen to what you said? So why don't you have the drive to talk a bit louder so that we can hear? I, we, we couldn't hear any question, even the comment. We repeatedly said it. So please, you said your question. Tell us what you said. I'm still learning. 
I'm still learning. Madam, let me, let me try first <coughs> to, to, be, to be loud and clear. Uh, the question of pulmonary hypertension and atrial septal defect, I have some queries. Queries like in, 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 in a significant number of patients, atrial septal defect is associated with primary pulmonary, primary pulmonary hypertension. So uh, when, we get, when we rely only on pulmonary hypertension, maybe a fraction of this patient with atrial septal defect may have primary pulmonary hypertension. I, I, I always think that it would be prudent to apply some, some drugs that work in pulmonary hypertension to see that if the pressure reduces. And in those cases, possibly we'll be able to do some device closure. And as regards Ajay's question, madam, uh, uh, the, the significant thing that occurs between, uh, the significant trade-off that occurs between pulmonary pressure and the right ventricular function is so different in atrial septal defect. Generally, Unless the pressure is too much high, in pulmonary pressure is too much high, right ventricular, right ventricular does not fail in case of atrial septal defect. It is such a late, late feature. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, before giving the, uh, if we see the pulmonary hypertension classification, uh, it, the pulmonary hypertension, uh, class one is the pulmonary arterial hypertension, which includes the idiopathic pulmonary hypertension and pulmonary hypertension due to ASD, VSD, PDA. So, it is not necessary to associate it with the primary pulmonary hypertension with ASD. It is the pulmonary arterial hypertension that develop in ASD and this drug will help to reduce the blood pre uh, pulmonary pressure. So uh, the pulmonary pressure raised due to ASD can be decreased by pulmonary vasodilatory drugs. Not necessarily it, is, it should be associated with primary pulmonary hypertension. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I, uh, <coughs> sorry, I mean time now. Uh, there's no problem, right? So very, very generous of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry, I'm interrupting the next session. I'm going to have a seven fifteen p.m. Lakasi. Protome, I'm going to have a Thai buji. Dakin, yete. Uh, 10 a.m. to 7.15 p.m. I was so happy. Just shara di na me ekane boshe apna the dekte pa mo. Kintu pore deklam is not right. I was really happy. I was ba ba shunda bor jonto thakte pa ba arki chai amar. Amar to kisi chai na. Anyway, it is not right. So, ekhon jeta holo. Ami to filling the gap korchi. To ya ami to bolia. J prosh prosh prosno gula apna question. All of you are correct. And the answers are also correct, and we know it. But sometimes we have to ask the question to know the others, mainly juniors, to have uh, the uh, knowledge of it, what we have done, uh, the forerunners. Th those days when we started, we were structural, we were congenital, we were EP, we were uh, intervention, we, we did everything. I was jack of all trades. But trades, but now the uh, uh, thing has separated and is for good, so one can get more experience in one thing. But um, uh, funnily, um, people comes now, patient comes and they have to do it. I don't know if we do it, but we don't do it, but we don't do it, but we right and left. Then we do it, peripheral, carotid, renal, these are uh, gone to the uh, vascular system. So, but we don't do that. So, we don't do that. We don't do that. We don't do that. We subdivided and it's for good. Anyway, the structural heart area, we call it aortic stenosis. It goes back. The first balloon was the first balloon was aortic latex balloon. Latex was professor and Alan was only Aston professor. And I had the opportunity because of my age. Uh, I met both of them and uh, they were so nice people. One has left the world, but the other one is still alive. And uh, they, they have invented it and, and uh, they have taught me how to do the uh, aortic uh, stenosis with balloon, and which I did in our country. And then uh, also metallic, they are the inventor of the metallic commissurotum. That also, he is a scientist, no doubt about that. And he has finally, uh, as uh, the Tavi started, for him is 20 years of his Tavi now. And he's my direct teacher, my mentor, my everything. But um, uh, he has uh, 
taught me so many things and um, he is the one who signed for me to have this tent implanted in Bangladesh because those days you had to have a certificate that you can put the stand and then the stand company would have given, not like uh, now right and left, wherever you want to put it, it's, it was not like that. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm saying because you have to know the history. Because, uh, uh, those days, as I said, that um, like a mad people, mad person, me uh, basically going training in the UK, training in um, France, training in Singapore, training in India, training in America, all the way because uh, there was nobody in front of me. Now you people are so lucky, so lucky, because you have got so many friends, so many colleagues you can discuss, and always please discuss. Because discussion doesn't make you small. Discussion makes you rich. So you can ventilate with each other. Your patient will be always yours. Don't worry about that. But the one thing, you know, which religion you practice is uh, none of my concern, but from above it is, uh, allotted what you will do in this world. You have to believe in that. And if you believe in that, it will come automatically, but you have to know what you are doing. So from there, we have come. Uh, 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 I have taken help of uh, Professor Salam uh, Rajak in following days. I have done one one case structural before ASD, VSD, all these one one PDA, all quite a few we used to give um, a coil also in the PDA those days. After that, when these uh, two were very expert and used to come in Euro Bangla, then I, I used to keep with me, them. The reason is to learn the latest technique. I don't feel ashamed till today. I, I really feel that I can always learn and if I stop learning, I'm dead. That's why no, thank you. Thank you to both of you because now and again, I have difficult cases, I call them and believe me, they are junior to me, but they were so good to me. They used to, Madam, you said, what did you say? What did you say? What did you say? Hey, dude, I don't know what I said. I was a little bit. But they have always supported me. I have done it. I could do it. But I wanted to know in bad cases what to do and they have shown me. And I'm grateful to them. This is the way um, and Abdul Momen was saying that, you know, you have to learn from each other, discuss with each other. One thing I will tell today, please, before selection the patient, see everything thoroughly. Take time. Take time before doing any procedure. Please, take time, see everything, then to handle the complication later. Because come, even if you are so careful, everything right, complication can come. But if you are not careful, complication will have a door to come easily, like anything, like flood. So the complication, as you said, like, um, so let me finish with uh, Professor uh, Pradeep Kumar. Kumar is very nice you have started. But um, you see, when you start something new, all of you, whatever you start new, there will be two sides of it. One will support you, and another side will not support you. Both you need. Both you need, because if don't, they don't criticize, you will not improve. And if they don't support, you cannot improve. So you need both sides. So don't get hurt about it. And this is the way I have been pushed by all used to push me, uh, don't do it, don't do it, can't do it, those, and that's why I used to go. This is the inspiration. The opposition is always the inspiration to you, for you to do it. So do it, and I'm sure you will do better. But. Um, this is one thing, uh, Ellen Kribier has came, uh, came to this country twice for us in, uh, in NICVD. I'm sure if you want him, uh, he will uh, be more delighted to come. This year, in 20 years of his study, he honored me there in France in PCR. What I think most of you have not seen it. Anyway, I was really emotional because I never thought my boss will honor me in his 20 years. So Bangladesh was there, and anyway, the next is, thank you, uh, Pradeep Kumar, you, you keep working. And uh, next comes uh, Abdul Momen. Both of you are very brilliant. All of you are very brilliant. I am nothing to you. Your uh, Momen is also very brilliant, worked with me, I know. PTMC, when we started here, you know, everybody had complications. As you said, if I, if I don't have a complication, then I have not done enough work. That is true. So complication like most common was pericardial effusion. 
then we start learn the auto transfusion uh, and then uh, you come complication of all others uh, mr um, uh, thromboembolic phenomenon and then uh, from nowhere you puncture the other structures these are uh, but i have never seen one that you showed the coronary this is see today i learned so this is new for me after all these I have learned today that it can happen, and you have shown it, and we have to believe it. That is true. But uh, my salute to you, thank you, you have uh, very nicely uh, managed that patient. TE, as uh, Professor Salam was saying, is, is most of the centers, even though where the mitral stenosis was more common, nowadays it has come down. Europeans and uh, Americans or uh, other countries, because they get one in a year or two in a year. So they do everything in the study to do that, to see. When we started putting stent, we didn't have IVAS. We didn't have OCT, but all was visual. Then the stent boost come, it, that also didn't give you a really good help. But is that always uh, for that you uh, choose how to, where to put, make the bed properly, so the landing zone is okay, like that in your mitral stenosis, or pulmonary valve or aortic valve, whatever you do, select the patient, make sure that the, like air, air embolism, if the balloon doesn't have air, where from air embolism will come? So the preparation of that balloon is very important. And if you think that this is Oxford one is uh, going to cause you a problem, don't use it. You are not bound to uh, may give problem to the patient. Number two is that these um, balloons we use, if you prepare it very nicely and it is said that no bubble should be there. So you can, if no bubble is there, no complication, there. even if it busts, the dye will come out of it, nothing will happen. So these are the things, that's why I always say, whatever you do, there's nothing simple in intervention, whatever you do. Always think that I might have a problem, so let's check everything, first patient, then the, your supporting investigation, and then the, your supporting instrument. Make sure those are all right. Even then you'll see that there's some problem. Because in our time, the pregnancy was uh, very difficult. Somebody became pregnant, and now there's a very severe mitral stenosis. In our time, we did that. We did that, and we did put in, uh, also had problem, like we did the mitral um, Valvoplasty, and uh, in the morning, in the evening, the patient had the uh, labor pain and they had to do the operation. And uh, we used to always keep the gynecologist alert that, at that time. So these are the things you have, before you do anything, make sure that what are the problem you might have, let's uh, keep ready, that thing is better for you. Thank you again, uh, Professor Momen. And then Sharia also has um, uh, took the difficult thing, a lot of congenital problem, and that uh, he has presented very nicely. I think we are uh, doing very well in that field. Thank you as well. Uh, 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 as a chairman, I am in, I'm in, I'm in fill up the gap person. I have to um, take advantage of saying for all of you. And then uh, next is Asan Abib. I think before next uh, meeting of uh, interventional cardiology, 2023, maybe we'll see that you have done the clips. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm looking forward if my Hayat allows me I will see you, inshallah, that you have done the clips in here. So I'm really, really happy to see you all working so nicely, so nicely, and keep doing work. Don't fall in traps of opposition, please. Just you keep your editor, Bangla Kothana, Monjil Thik Koran. Ami eta korte hove, no matter ki hoi. Thik hai se? To e judi koran, tale, what you want, you know it. What you uh, want, you know it here, know it there, so do it. And don't fall in traps of the others, because I have to say that I have to say that I have to so this is also, we have to be careful about that, that we can face it. And it's a dangerous thing to have a coronary. And luckily, it was not um, uh, ruptured or uh, teared or whatever. But um, thank you, and I'm really happy to see you. We, all of you are working so good, so nice, better than me. And I keep praying for you so that you'll do more, better, and more new technology. Thank you. Thank you, madam, for your very kind words.
and uh, this is the beauty of our society we all here act together to serve the people in distress i would like to request our panel of experts and chairperson to make few comments on our topics today i think uh, uh, madam has concluded all the things and he has pointed out all the things is enough still <laughs> for uh, yeah, formality i just uh, i identified two points mr and tr these are our functional and we have to first decided these things then we have put the device for an mr we, sh we should uh, should not go for the um, uh, quantity differentiation now it's in the new phenomenon is dptt and for tr you should know what is hyperkinetic ph these things first you should know then you apply the device that's all i would not uh, talk anymore madam does uh, touch every aspect thank you very much i request professor emeritus sufia raman madam to hand over the crest to dr pradeep kumar karmakar i request uh, professor sk rajak sir to hand over crest to dr abdul momin thank you i will request dr taufik sharier hawk to receive his crest from professor abdul salam sir thank you i will request dr sm asan habib to receive his crest from dr abdullah sharier sir